Across the next three videos, we are going to be exploring the different elements that made up the large site of Crystal Palace Park. From the main Crystal Palace building itself, to the fountains, attractions and many different forms of unique transport found within the park. In today's video, we will be looking at the Crystal Palace high and low level stations, then delving into some of the experimental railways built in the park. We're going to start with the low level station. Located at the west side of Crystal Palace Park, it opened in 1854 along with the relocation of the Crystal Palace from Hyde Park. The station serves trains running between London Bridge and London Victoria, in addition to services terminating at Beckenham Junction and Sutton. The station is also a terminus of the East London line of the London Overground. It is accessed by the Crystal Palace Tunnel, which ventures underneath the palace site and also the 2,200 ton Brunel Water Tower. There used to be a covered walkway running all the way from the palace and down to the station. The outer wall of this still exists today, just outside the station. Now let's head up to the north side of the park and behind the palace, and we're going to look at what was the site of the high level station. This opened later in 1865 to bring further services from London to the palace. The station was excavated into a ridge just below Crystal Palace Parade and required major engineering works. Due to the reduction in numbers from the palace when it burnt down in 1936, the station eventually closed in 1954, but it wasn't demolished until 1961. So right where I'm stood now would have been the Crystal Palace Upper Station. And you can see the remaining station wall there all along the side of it. So the main Crystal Palace is across the road directly over there. And then the park leaves from there and makes its way down the valley there. But this one was the main Crystal Palace station at the time. As you can see now, it's all a new housing estate here, but all the walls around the side are the original walls, including this bridge here. This is the original bridge. So the line came in from the back end over there. It exited a tunnel underneath the hill and came into the station. Now this station was a terminus station. So the lines would have come in and gone straight back out. But they also had a turntable on this side of the bridge. So let me go over there and show you that. So directly down here was a turntable where they could bring the engines in and turn them around and then go back out forward. And you can see some of the old recesses down there in the edges. So I've made it down to the lower level. You can see the old station wall right here, a bit closer up. So I've been stood on the uh, track beds now, or the platforms, pretty much. It was the full width of this housing development here. And then it went all the way back to the end of this wall here. It was quite a big station. And then beyond that, it just turned into an embankment or like a, a retaining wall and then entered the tunnel a couple of hundred yards further down there. Now directly up here, there is a subway just above that wall there, going underneath the road, the main road there, and the palace would have been just behind it. So what you did, you came through the station, walked across a bridge into there and under a subway, which is very, very grand inside. 
people arriving here were coming to go to the palace and it was the dignified people that went to the palace so they wanted it to look nice I mean the structure was impressive but they wanted the station and right through to the palace to look nice as well so the station was very grand and this subway was something else now if I can I'm just going to send the drone up here so I can show you the subway from this side and then we'll try show you from the other side because at the minute this is being restored back to its former glory and it's closed off so I can't get in and show you. We're now going to take a look at the approximate site of the little known Crystal Palace Atmospheric or Pneumatic Railway, or the Victorian Hyperloop if you will. Built in the park in 1864 and only lasting a matter of months, it ran just over 600 yards in a 10 foot diameter brick tunnel between the Sydenham and the Penge gates to the park. The tunnel had a gradient of 1 in 15 and followed a sharp curve. Its main premise was to showcase the new technology in the hope that it would be purchased for use in the real world. It consisted of a single 35 passenger carriage that ran through an airtight tunnel. The carriage would be sucked and pushed to either terminus via a steam powered fan. This is an approximation of the route. This purely is based on guesswork from multiple sources, but it does involve some clues and information that we managed to find. It would also match the length of 600 yards and the curve described. Also, if you look at these two LIDAR images, you can see what appears to be a suitable depth for the train to enter a tunnel and head underground. And also the same at the Sydenham station site. This appears to be an impression in the ground where the station site was. So I'm stood currently at the bottom end of Crystal Palace Park and near the Penge entrance. Now we think, or it's rumoured to be, the starting point somewhere around here behind me of where the pneumatic railway started, where the station was, near the Penge gate. And then you would have gone into a tunnel and then that's where the air pressure would have pushed the train all the way up to the top of the hill, which we'll get to shortly and I'll show you where we think the top station was as well, the Sydenham station. So just to my left over here is the boating lake behind that fence and currently we've got some I would say new but they're not new <laughs> some Victorian villas here built on the edge of the park now these didn't used to be here but this would have been a completely empty piece of land all the way around the bottom of the park now I know there used to be some kind of a rifle range down here and the rumors are that the railway 
was somewhere, it did say, near the Penge entrance, which is just over there, and near the rifle range, which was here on the right. Now, if you look around, the only place I can see topographically that would work would be down here, or maybe in these trees here. So that boating lake here has always been here from day one, and it's the level it's at wouldn't have been wouldn't have changed. So the only place you can think of they would have built it, and we know it was somewhere around here, would be down here in the little valley. So the rumours are, and it's just not confirmed by any means, but the rumours are that the station was somewhere down here. Now we know that this only lasted a couple of months. So I'm currently stood in the trees where we think the station would have been. Now again, we're only going off this picture to show what it looked like. Now we know that this is probably using artists uh, license to show you what it looked like. We don't think it's accurate by any means, but it would have been based on something. But I reckon it was somewhere around here. Like I said, you've got the higher level to my right up here for the boating lake. And then the main road is just over there. So none of this would have changed. But this section here is level with the road. And then just over here, it goes in to a steep hillside going up. So that could be where the tunnel entrance was. Now for a second, I thought that was some pieces of railway track down there. Not that you would find them there, but that's fencing. <laughs> I thought it was a railway track. So I'm gonna hedge my bets and say it was where I was in them trees there. You can see how steep it is down there. So like I say, the rumors are, it followed these villas here, underneath the ground, right across here, and all the way around the edges here. And like I said, the villas are here as well, on the outer edges of the park. They wouldn't have been there. Now, just a bit further up here, it rises quite sharply but the route would be roughly where I'm walking now it would be somewhere underneath here heading up and curving its way around right to the top up there and I'll show you where the Sydenham station was believed to be up here so I've just moved a bit further up and again there's the route that would have headed around the edge of the park there somewhere in that vicinity now they did do a couple of test digs somewhere I believe around here we're not under I can't tell you for sure but it was somewhere around here somebody will know where they were and they thought they found some kind of a, a tunnel underneath but not 100% like I say it was only around for a couple of months so the chance of it leaving a lasting impression is quite slim so I bet if you dug down a lot of this earth here you would find a lot of things remaining but it is never going to happen unless they do some building work on it. So this is the Sydenham gate behind me here. And we know that it exited very close to this gate. I'm now right at the top of the hill. And it definitely went up a hill. <laughs> now where I am, I think, would have been the rough site of where the station was. It would have exited on a slope and then had a holding break at the top of some sort. And then they would literally have released it back into the tunnel using air pressure to keep it, to slow it down basically, as it rolled down via gravity alone, down to the bottom station. So this is the current site here. Now these trees have been here for hundreds of years. So I'm gonna bet that that hasn't changed much. I reckon it was somewhere in this vicinity right here. Would have been the end station or the Sydenham station as it was called. Now, very close to the end, the Sydenham terminus for the pneumatic railway here, there was also another type of railway here, but this only featured during the Festival of the Empire, and it was known as the Keenies Railway, or High Speed Railway it was called. Now, to me, it looked like a hybrid of a monorail and a railway, and it kind of resembled the Wuppertal in Germany. It kind of resembled them but it had track underneath as well. So it was basically a suspended car from a rail, also on a bottom uh, track. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but I'll show you a picture of it now. Now, the benefit with this was apparently the stability and the fact that it could take tight corners very fast because it wouldn't roll off or tip over. I think that was the benefit. Now, they piloted it here, right in the park, during the Festival of the Empire, but the idea didn't cotton on at all. But that system is literally a couple of hundred yards away 
from the pneumatic railway which is behind us and it ran just down here along the edge of the pathway here and curved its way right over there to the central avenue right in the middle of the park it was only a small section like an l-shape that came round here this was the strangest railway proposal of all on paper it seems pointless but when you look at the advantages it can navigate tight curves it was impossible for derailments and speed would not be an issue it was proposed to be a tube based railway with rails on the ground as a conventional railway and also the added upper guide rail on the roof it would also adopt a roller coaster type motion where it would leave the subservice stations and into deep level tunnels using gravity to speed up the train as it descends and slowed down naturally when it climbs up to the next station the closest this came to fruition was actually a proposed system in Leeds where plans advanced as far as discussions with the council. Ultimately it never caught on and none were actually commissioned. A full working model based railway was built here at Crystal Palace for the Festival of the Empire in 1911. It was a short section of track that ran on the route as seen on this diagram. Although it was believed to have been a scale model I just can't understand how it would have travelled the distance depicted on this image. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look into the history of Crystal Palace and the park as well. Like I said, I've really wanted to come here for a long time and I'm glad I've done it. Absolutely baking, but I think I'm going to get a good video out of this. But thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video and any comments down below. And I'll see you next week. Bye.